Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about CDI. Je Jesse mentioned that in the uh, the intro. Uh, I'm going to shut up and let you take it from here. Go ahead. Yeah, so CDI is is an interesting specification because it's very broad, very very powerful, and at, there are a lot of parts of, of it that seem just kind of like mystical magic. Like it took me a while to figure out what was going on. Um, but what it what the important thing to know from an XPages developer's perspective is it is managed beans. So I was going to say managed beans 2.0, but it's like four or something. So it's if you have your managed beans in XPages where you have faces config and you say here's my uh, here is my the name of the bean I want. Here's the class. Here's the scope. Um, you can also do like managed properties, but nobody does. Um, like that's managed beans there. So you have application scope, request scope, session scope, view scope, all of those. Um, CDI is one of it, it, it's an evolution of that. Like it, it's there's been like a weird tortured history of all this stuff inside the Java EE world, but the important part is that this is a way to do that and a lot more. The immediate difference that, that is important is that you don't have a faces config.xml equivalent. Like there is technically a beans XML, but it's almost never used for a lot of this. Like there are edge cases where you use it. But the big difference is that these beans are defined um, declaratively with annotations. So this is a recurring theme with a lot of these specs where it's annotations, annotations, annotations. Uh, so the way this works is that I have this class here named request guy and I said this is at request scoped and then that on its own is enough to say this is now a request scope bean. If I don't do anything else, it will be named request guy with a capital R. It will be created the first time it's used during a request and it will be destroyed at the end of that request. Um, and that's it. So on its own, that's the main entry point for CDI. It is managed beans and it's done with annotations. Um, you can then give them different names. So this is equivalent to managed bean name. So if you don't want it to be called request guy with a capital R, here I just call it request guy with a lowercase r, you know, six of one kind of situation. Um, and so here, this is, that's the basic. So like right there, it's matched what XPages has, but instead of having to have a separate file, you put it on the, you put it on the class directly. Uh, which on its own is kind of nice. That does get you a couple extra powers that are not really present in XPages. One of those is used here where you have post construct and pre destroy methods. So these, because um, like XPages could theoretically do this, but I don't think it does. Um, but because the, the lifetime of this object is managed by the CDI container, which I bound up tightly to the XPages runtime, um, you can say, it will create this object in memory and then it will call this method. So this is very similar to if you had a constructor, um, but there are a couple of nice things that you can do here. Um, one is that it's a little more efficient, but also it does, it handles errors better. Like you don't want to do too much in your constructor because if you do, you start getting weird versions of errors when it tries to create it and having it in the post construct is a nice way to do it. But the pre destroy is also particularly powerful because this will be called at the end of your request. So you make a request that uses this. For example, if this opened up a database and had a document in memory, um, you could in pre destroy, like if you were using like a different session or something, you could recycle those. You could handle that. You could handle that case of I've created the object, now I need to destroy it. A lot of the time in Java, you don't need to, like you don't need to have one of these, but there's a lot of value in the this is the start and this is the end. And this also applies not just to individual requests, but things like sessions and the application. So yeah. this bean will start up. Yep. I, I was gonna ask, you know, if I think about um, kind of my history of using Java and XPages, Oda came along pretty pretty much at the same time. And, and of course, one of the big arguments that everybody made with Oda was that you could not have to worry about um, destroying a document object or a database object, right? The recycling was handled. But I never ever thought about that from a larger Java object perspective. I never thought about needing to worry about um, recycling those objects. And so you're saying you don't really have to, but this gives you that much more control. Well, and almost all the time you don't, but there are special classes of of objects that do have something you would want to close. For example, if you had a class that opened up a JDBC connection, um, uh, you'd probably do this with a pool, but like for just a network connection. 
you had something that opened up, like you could imagine, say, if you had a session scope bean that opened up a long running remote network connection to a server that said this session has opened up and then it will do some stuff like user went to this page, user went to this page, just if you were logging that or whatever. And then at the end of the session, it would say, now tell the server that the session has ended and close the connection. And you don't have to write the code that does that. It, it, this looks for, this listens for sessions and then closes that out. So, you know, Brilliant. domino objects, like all the recycling comes in because they are that special case of effect. You know, they're effectively, you can think of them as like a network connection. Uh, I mean, they're local, they're not necessarily over network, but it's the same sort of thing. So an open file, a, a network connection, you know, any, any socket stuff along those lines, something where it's live and should be closed in a way that Java can't necessarily know until you tell it. Um, that's where this can come into play. So if you have open stuff that's cleaned up, you know, again, temp, temp files, or for example, if you were, you know, and again, I mentioned there the logging like you could have it so that it logs to a document in the database some whatever and like handle that in the pre pre-destroyed so that's like right before everything else is done do this and so that's one of those nice capabilities where it's like you can't do that with managed beans currently like java has a finalized method but it's notoriously not to be used um for various bad reasons essentially <laughs> like it's a weird situation but don't use it um so that's like, okay, now we got managed beans. They're easier to declare. I don't need to worry about the XML. And now I can do pre-destroy uh, pre and post-construct. CDI goes a lot beyond that. And um, the other big thing that, it, that comes into play is this, at inject. So what this is, is um, I, I did mention managed properties. So in, in faces config, um, when you're specifying a bean, you can say, set this property, like the property foo to hello. And it's like a string. I think you can also put in expression language. I'm not sure. Um, I forget, but like you can do a little bit of that. Um, but this goes a lot beyond that. So by default, what you're gonna be doing most of the time is what I'm doing here, which is I'm saying, when I'm using this session object, I want the runtime to make sure that the application guy manage bean, which is an application scope one, is inserted into this. So I don't need to do a lookup for this other manage bean. So this is effectively handling the job of where you would previously do uh, xlibutil.resolve variable, um, where you'd say, just give me this other one at runtime. This handles that. Um, some of the neat stuff is that it handles the distinctions between different levels of beans. So for example, you can go from an application scope bean, which will last half an hour or more, and say, when somebody calls this, I want to inject the current request scope bean to do a special thing. And so it handles all those weird things where like normally you wouldn't be able to have a request scoped thing in a longer lived application scope thing but CDI uses a lot of magic behind the scenes to make that kind of thing work. Um, and it also goes a lot, bit, like you can you can have your own um, customized scopes if you want to, not many people do, I haven't, other than mimicking view scope. Um, but you can do that, you can have um, some interesting capabilities where, because what you're doing here is saying, I just want a object of this type, rather than saying i want the managed bean named whatever you can get really indirect in ways that are interesting and powerful some of which are very arcane some of which are less so what you might do is so there's the the general paradigm in java where you have an interface and then the implementation of that interface so you'd have for example http client i want to have I want to have the general notion of something that can make HTTP requests, and then you might have HTTP client impl that does it in some specific way. What you would do is you'd say at inject of HTTP client of this, and then at runtime, the system would figure out what's the one that's supposed to be in there. So um, this is used quite a bit for exactly this kind of reason, where all you want is an object that can do this, but you might have a dependency that provides you one that uses um, the built-in URL connection stuff. You might have one that uses um, Apache HTTP client or, or what have you. And so this is a way to say, I just want something that will do this. I don't care where it comes from. Um, you can also provide additional qualifiers, which I think the best way to do that will be to um, talk about in micro profile config, 
Okay, so I, as you've been describing this, you've you've been losing me. And what I'm okay. trying to do is is map myself back to kind of a classic X Pages application or, mm -hmm. or a simple notes application. So, for example, something like a calendar. So we go off and we say, okay, um, I'm I'm building for whatever reason I'm building a calendar and it's got a bunch of documents in it. So I'm making a call out to notes and I'm getting back a collection of document objects and I want to turn that into my own custom object like you're talking about right here. Would that would that map the way that, that you were just describing things? So potentially. So the so there's a couple ways that you could go about doing that. So one way would be that you would just have like a bean that says this is my my calendar bean and you would say inject that into this other one and then that's just essentially the same as saying if you had a, an application scope bean and then you did faces can or, or xlibutil dot resolve variable and you got that. So that's one level of it where you just have kind of like your utility, you have a class that manages that stuff. And then you had you can inject that into other classes at runtime. And it's just a nice way of doing that kind of give me this bean uh, and then make sure that it's available. Um, where it gets fancier is if you wanted to say inject a list of current uh, like list of meetings for the day so you'd say inject a list of meeting and then you would have your calendar bean that says i can produce a list of meetings of meetings and so what it would do is have a method that says show you know get current meetings and it would handle binding those things together so you would say just give me a list of current meetings and then the other class would say i know how to do that here you go so wow. this class here doesn't need to know that there is a bean called calendar bean that handles this stuff. All it needs to say is I want a list of meetings and then calendar bean, it just needs to say I can produce a list of meetings. And then the system will combine those two and as needed, as you call it, you will get the current list of meetings based on the program, the, the programmatic reasons over here. So it can get right, right. fancier like that. Yeah, we're, we're, what we're ultimately talking about and it's taken me a while to come around to this, is to to just make things that much more efficient right that much easier yeah. to handle and give us more power yeah it's like a lot of and some of the stuff that makes cdi weird and, and a hurdle like it, it took me a while to get used to why it exists why you do some of this like some of it's easy like ah at session scoped i'm on board you're like sold i know how to do that like but then <laughs> yeah. the other stuff of like injecting especially then when it gets to programmatic injection of like a method can produce something and it gets injected here um there are a lot of reasons why that is better long term so one of the big ways that does relate directly to xpages stuff is you know when you say xlibutil.resolve variable that means that you have a string in your Java class that has to match something from faces config, which in turn has to match some other Java class and nothing will enforce it until you run that code. You better be right. You better not change anything. You better not remove it. But if you have this other stuff, you could say, well, I don't care what the other bean is called. I just care that it exists somewhere. I, all I care about is that it's there. And so like in the meeting example, like I don't care what the mechanism is for the, for determining what the meetings for the day are. I just care that it exists. Like, just give me that. And then you have other code that says, I know how to do this. And so they don't have to know about each other. Like the bean over here doesn't have to say, here's your stuff. This bean doesn't have to say, hey, I wanna talk to this one specifically. It just says, just give me this. And so you can swap these things out. And wow. in a very simple application, who cares? In a larger one, it really, really pays off. And X pages applications, like notes applications, have a way of of growing and becoming unmaintainable. 